Okay, let's take a look at this now. Fatty liver. Most people think fatty liver is a chronic progressive disease, which is incorrect. Uh, this lady is incorrect here. Fatty liver is a chronic progressive disease. Uh, it has three stages. A stage of steatosis where there is fat deposition in the liver. A stage of steatohepatitis where there is fat with inflammation and scarring, which is also known as fibrosis. And as this stage progresses, we develop something known as cirrhosis related to fatty liver disease. So fatty liver can be alcohol related and it can be non-alcohol related. So I, ideally when we just talk about fatty liver, we presume it is non-alcohol related and it is mostly because of metabolic syndrome or metabolic dysfunction where patients do have other associated factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity or overweight, a sedentary life, hypothyroidism, high uric acid or heart disease. Very often it's just driven by bad lifestyle, which then also means that the correct lifestyle intervention can actually reverse this. So this is again wrong. It is not just a bad lifestyle. It has a lot to do with genetics. So even thin people can get severe fatty liver disease, which can progress to cirrhosis. Uh, this is known as previously known as lean NASH or non-alcoholic state of hepatitis, which is seen in very lean people. And uh, this is mostly genetically driven. So we have had uh, patients who have you know, over generations, in multiple generations of the same family with severe fatty liver disease and cirrhosis. And there are specific genes. For example, there is a gene known as PNPLA3, which can predispose to uh, fatty liver, fatty liver disease, steatohepatitis, and later on cirrhosis. Uh, so it's not just a bad lifestyle. Of course, uh, good lifestyle helps us improve or reduce the burden of fatty liver disease and its progression, but it's not always a lifestyle. There are a lot of other things that we need to consider condition. There's also this misconception that fatty liver happens only to those people who consume alcohol. This is also incorrect. What can you do then to reverse fatty liver? This is what I prescribe to most of my patients. Stop processed food, stop sugar, especially liquid sugars, which is probably the worst offending agent. For so there are clinical guidelines and nutritional guidelines that help us uh, prescribe nutrition and diet for patients with fatty liver. And this has been uh, prescribed, I mean, this, these guidelines are made across various regions. So there is American Association of Study of Liver Disease Guidelines. There is a European Association of Study of Liver Disease Guidelines. There is an Indian National Association of St Liver Disease Guidelines. So there are multiple guidelines and none of these guidelines actually mention that we have to stop. You know, it's basically limit or reduce. So you limit added sugars, you limit processed foods and you limit sugar sweetened beverages. So I'm not sure what uh, what liquid sugar is. I think she meant uh, Coke, which is sugar sweetened beverage. Limiting these will help us improve improve our metabolic parameters. But you don't need to stop it. You know, if you're if you're somebody who consumes uh, seven uh, cokes in a week, reduce it to two or three, and slowly change it to diet coke. You know, there are uh, versions of sugar sugar sweetened beverages where there is zero calorie, low calorie. This helps reduce. Uh, fat liver disease and improve metabolic parameters so you can shift to uh, beverages where there is low calorie or zero calorie for uh, your your liver reduce the consumption of cereal stop the use of seed oils which can okay two things here uh, one is reduce the consumption of cereal there are no specific guidelines which states this you can limit the consumption of cereal which is sugar sweetened there are uh, non-sugar sweetened beverages, uh, cereals that you can actually have and uh, these are perfectly fine. Most of the cereals are fortified with vitamins and minerals. So this helps us, uh, you know, take in our recommended daily allowance of vitamins and minerals. So a good fortified cereal breakfast is healthy. So you can go for the uh, non-sugar added versions of this. The second is seed oils. A lot of fear mongering on it, on this uh, topic. And it's it's basically a lot of conspiracy theory. Uh, this lady is not a doctor. I'll, I'll come to that at the end of the video. Seed oils are perfectly fine. You have to reduce or limit uh, the use of saturated uh, fats. So that means coconut oil, uh, clarified butter or ghee, uh, palm oil, which is mostly seen in processed foods, and also butter, margarine, etc. Seed oils are perfectly safe. In fact, there was a study which showed that uh, if you switch clarified butter or ghee uh, with rapeseed oil, uh, which is a seed oil, it actually improved metabolic parameters in uh, among the among the study participants. So you actually have improved metabolic parameters and thereby a reduction in uh, fat liver disease if you replace saturated fats with seed oil. So don't worry about seed oils. It's a big 
cult out there that just fear mongers people on seed oils it's perfectly fine to use use different types of seed oils different varieties of seed oils so that you have a diversity in your uh, fat intake can be both pro pro inflammatory and can cause oxidative damage so these are just scientific jargon so scientific terms that they just throw in the air it means nothing oxidative damage oxidative stress all of this happens normally inside our bodies it's all part of the physiology so don't worry about all this uh, a lot of these so called doctors they just fear monger you know the viewers on uh, using these scientific terms and they know, know only very few scientific terms inflammation oxidative stress etc on which they keep you know rinse rinse and repeat their content on these so don't worry about all that stop smoking and drinking i agree to that stop the use of painkillers especially medicines like paracetamol and tylenol this is absolute nonsense Uh, there is there is no data or evidence to show that you know use of paracetamol, which is also Tylenol, is a brand name, uh, and other painkillers actually uh, cause or worsen fatty liver disease. This is absolutely not true. You can use painkillers uh, and paracetamol or Tylenol um, as per prescription as your need be. This does in no way worsen your uh, fatty liver or uh, increase your chance of developing fatty liver. So this is actually the most nonsensical part of this video. what can you do drop weight intermittent fast include so intermittent fasting is a way of calorie restriction or you going into a calorie deficit that definitely helps but it's not just intermittent fasting that you can do on this there are a lot of other ways that you can uh, go in a calorie deficit and reduce weight for for some people it's intermittent fasting for some it's just uh, something known as a plate method where they eat normal meals but they reduce the portions and control their portions and then they burn out burn it out uh, with good aerobic activity so intermittent fasting is not a recommended form of weight loss or calorie restriction if you are okay with it you can use it do a cup or two of black coffee every day make that 3 100 to 120 ml each no sugar no cream no milk it helps put a lot of fiber in your diet and i like the use of certain supplements like methicillin methicil okay so i mentioned that uh, the paracetamol and painkiller part was the most nonsensical part of the video but i'm i'm sorry this this is the most nonsensical part of the video the glutathione omega 3s vitamin e carnitine to be done only on so none of these supplements actually work and it this is this is very wrong this is absolute nonsensical misinformation uh, glutathione does not work for fatty liver milk thistle absolute nonsense uh, please don't use it for fatty liver and i don't think uh, a proper doctor would ever prescribe this for fatty liver uh, next is carnitine no use vitamin e yes it was studied uh, in the pivens trial vitamin e with pioglitazone but that is only for a specific group of patients with diabetes currently it is not recommended but it is approved for use by various clinical societies better drugs are now coming in for fatty liver disease management so please keep a watch out for that no supplements other than uh, you know a good control of metabolic disease metabolic syndrome uh, will help in control of non alcohol related fatty liver disease under medical supervision stay well so this this lady is what we call as a functional medicine doctor uh, but you should know that they are neither functional nor doctors uh, they just try to sell supplements at the end of their videos you can, as you can see in this video so be alert stay safe and get your medical information from certified trained specialist thank you